Hi, I'm Nick Cosentino, and I'm a Principal Software Engineering Manager at Microsoft. In this video, we're going to be looking at Fusion Cache, and in particular, the fail-safe feature with respect to expiring records in the cache. Now, if you're not familiar with Fusion Cache, it is an alternative third-party NuGet package that we can leverage for a hybrid cache solution. That means that it does support in-memory as well as distributed caching mechanisms. We'll look specifically at the fail-safe mechanism, expiring and removing cache entries. So if that sounds interesting, just a reminder to subscribe to the channel and check out that pinned comment for my courses on Dome Train. Now let's jump over to Visual Studio and see everyone's favorite sample application, the Weather Forecast app. All right, to get started with Fusion Cache, we need to make sure that we're adding the NuGet package. So after we have the NuGet package added, we need to make sure that we have the cache available through dependency injection. So I'm just adding Fusion Cache right here at the top on line four. And then from there, we're able to access it through dependency injection on our minimal API. So line 10 here, you can see that I have iFusion Cache, and then I have the cache reference coming in that we can work with. Now, in this example, it is just going to be the weather forecast app. If you've made an ASP.NET Core application in Visual Studio before, this is the very basic thing that they put together for you out of the box. What we're going to be doing is that we have this factory method right here, and that means that when our entry is not found in the cache based on this key that we have on line 13, I'm just calling it cache key. This would be a little bit more complicated or custom tailored in your application, but in this one, it's just gonna be called cache key. If it's not found, we'll call the factory method. We'll go look at that in just a moment. But the other thing to note is that I'm gonna be setting the is fail safe enabled property here on the fusion cache entry options. What exactly is fail safe here? Well, if I jump over to the documentation website for Fusion Cache, they have a very good explanation. And in fact, a lot of their documentation is really good with examples and pictures. So I think if you need a little bit more information or want to dive deeper on this kind of stuff, their documentation is great. And like I said, even for the other features in Fusion Cache, you should be able to check out their docs. And I think they do an awesome job. In a nutshell, the fail safe method allows us to be able to have a fallback cache entry if we were to expire something. And that's because in more complex distributed systems, if we were to expire a cache entry or it has expired naturally based on the time setting that we have, if something is going to go fetch the new value, so calling our factory method, if that downstream service ends up throwing an exception for some reason, and we originally had something there in the cache that had just expired, we do have this opportunity to say, okay, even though we failed fetching the new value, let's just return to our caller the last one that was there. So we are saying that we're going to give our caller a stale value. This might not be okay in every scenario, which is why it's an option. So this is a fallback opportunity that if you do have a problem, that we can go back to some stale value. And that way, at least the service is not disrupted or your API call is not disrupted. And then someone can continue even though the value is stale. Now, before we go back to the factory method implementation here, I'm just gonna show you two more API calls that I've added, and that's going to be an expire route and a remove route. And that means that we have two different options here with Fusion Cache to be able to remove entries. The first one is going to be expire, and the second one is remove, as the names on the API calls sort of indicate, right? So the expire one, if we check out the documentation, it says expires the cache entry for the specific key. That can mean an expire, if the fail safe was enabled when saving the entry, or remove if fail safe was not enabled when saving the entry, all automatically. If we look back up at line 17, I do have fail safe enabled. So that will mean that we are going to try and expire the entry. So what does it mean to expire versus remove? Well, let's go check out remove. And it just says removes the value in the cache for the specified key, right? So this basically will directly remove it. Whereas expire has this option to keep the entry in the cache, but say, hey, look, this thing's stale. And that means again, when we have fail safe enabled, if on a subsequent call to go do the factory method call, again, we're gonna see this in just a second, if we go back into here to try and get a new fresh value, if it throws an exception, we can fall back to the stale one. This is just a brief interruption to remind you that I do have courses available on Dome Train focused on C Sharp. So whether you're interested in getting started in C Sharp, looking for a little bit more of an intermediate course focused on object-oriented programming and some async programming, or are you just looking to update your refactoring skills and see some examples that we can walk through together, you can go ahead and check them out by visiting the links in the description and the comment below. Thanks and back to the video. 
Let's go check out create forecast async, which is our factory method. This is going to be a little bit contrived, but it's just going to be to illustrate the example. I have a parameter passed in called counter. This isn't really a good real example, but what we're going to do is throw an exception when our counter hits two. So if I scroll back up, you'll see that on line 14, I'm increasing this counter. This is just going to be to simulate this example for us. What we're going to do though, is we're going to wait a full second when we're calling this. That way we can kind of simulate that this API is taking a moment to respond when it's not getting the cached value. And we can also see that we will write to the console. And that way we have some type of visual indication when our factory methods being called. What we're going to try and do is run this application. We're going to hit the API, see that we have cached values, and we'll see when the factory methods actually called. Then we'll play around with expiring and removing entries to see the behavior. All right, to kick things off, I have the weather forecast app running. I'm gonna go ahead and go to weather forecast. You'll see that it takes a moment and then we get results back. If I pop this console open, you can see forecast created zero. So the first time we went in, our counter is at zero. If I go to call weather forecast again, it finishes basically immediately. So if I press enter again and again and again, you can see that instantly we're getting results back and it's the same results. That's because they're cached. And to go back to the console, you can see that forecast created has not printed again. We've only gone into that factory method the one single time. So let's go ahead and expire this entry. When I hit this route, sorry, I should have said flashbang warning, but we expire it. That means that the entry is no longer in the cache. I wasn't returning any value though. So let's go ahead and go back to weather forecast, right? We go do this. Now we see the weather forecast returned and we can see that forecast created one is the return value here. That's going to mean that we ended up going back into the factory method yet another time. Just a heads up, if it looked like this one completed very fast, I've noticed that sometimes there's some pre-flight calls from the browser, and we might have actually seen that when I was going into my menu to go auto-complete the forecast route that we needed to hit, it might have already done the pre-flight, and that way it actually happened very fast. Even though we still had to go into this, it's just that it happened behind the scenes. Now, let's go expire it one more time. And remember, the second time that we have to go back into the factory method, it should throw an exception. So let's expire it. Flashbang warning. There we go, expired. Now we're gonna go back to the route and you can see, just to prove it, my autocomplete kicked in and it actually did a pre-flight here. I never pressed enter, but you can see that the factory method, we entered it again and we're throwing this exception. It says, oh no. Okay, so I'm gonna press F5 again. And there we go. So I never actually pressed enter yet. Like I said, it was pre-flighting. So I'm going to press enter now. There we go. It took a moment to go regenerate the cache entry. But you can see that what ended up happening here was that we did this part here where it was the fail safe and it was actually returning the value for us. And then we saw this exception get logged. But you can see that right after we did forecast created three. So unfortunately, when I was demonstrating this example, because of the pre-flighting, that meant that we didn't get to see the cached value come back. I decided that I would repeat this example, but instead use two tabs here so that I don't have to use the drop down. So I got us back to the state. If I go back to the console, you can see I've done forecast created the first time, the second time. I've just expired the cache entry. So again, if I go to press weather forecast enter right now, we should be able to see this behavior where we throw an exception and we're going to get the fail save value. So just to make sure that we're looking at the same data, temperature C 23, summary says warm, and then temperature F 73. So press enter, there is the exception and we get 23 warm 73, right? Just looking at this first entry that we had here. So this actually did give us the cached value. You can see fail safe activated from memory. So unfortunately, like I said, that first example, because of the browser behavior, it ended up going and 
calling the API one more time so I couldn't show you the cache value, made it a little bit messy, but that's just how it worked out. The second time through, I made sure I used two tabs so we wouldn't have this behavior. Just makes it for an easier example to follow along with. But as you can see, forecast created zero. This is the second time we went in. And then the third time, which is when the count is actually two, we throw the exception, right? then that means that we fall back to getting the fail safe value because we've enabled it. Now, if I go to call this again, you can see that we get another one. And that's because the cached value was stale when we returned it, right? And we did the fail safe. So going back to the console, you can see that we now on the next attempt, we said, okay, it was a fail safe attempt before. Right, so we fell back. Now that someone's calling us again, we're saying this value is stale, it's been expired. So we are going to try it one more time. Because I had that counter set to check for exactly two, we've now passed two, we've gone to three. So it's not gonna throw an exception again, it's just a one-time thing. And we were successfully able to go past that if statement and get the value back. So now that we've seen how we can do fail safe with expiration, I just wanted to show you explicitly doing removing. So let's go ahead and run this. We'll go back to the browser. Now, if I call weather forecast, we should go to the API once and do the factory method call, right? So if I go back over to the console, we see forecast created. What I'm going to do is instead of expire, I'm just going to go to remove. Again, it's going to be very bright. I apologize. So we remove it. Now, if I go back to weather forecast, there is the entry. And we can see forecast created zero, then forecast created one. If I call this again, again, it's instantaneous. It's because it's cached. To quickly summarize the two options that we have, if we want to remove a cache entry, we can explicitly call remove. And that means that the next time someone goes to get it, it's not gonna treat it as a potentially stale value. That means it's just not going to be there. It will mean that the caller, because the cache entry is not there, it will basically miss the cache, go do whatever factory method. In this case, it's just generating some random data. In your system, it may be hitting a database or a downstream service, and then it will cache that result after. With the expire entry and the fail safe combination, it essentially allows us to keep a stale entry in the cache. And that way, if there's an error on the next subsequent call to do the factory method, we can fall back to the stale value. Again, this can be a helpful thing in your system if you need a little bit more resilience and you need to handle errors like this. But again, being able to return stale values may not be acceptable in your system. So just more tools and options for you to work with. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.